Hi, Collective. I hope you're all doing well. So I pulled two cards to see what's going on with you. Now, this could be for you individually, or it could be a message about the Collective for the Collective. So take it as it resonates. But for your energy, I got the sacrifice. And for the outside energy, which initially I was thinking might be an outside person that you're dealing with, but it actually seems like an external energy in terms of spirit, the cosmos, maybe collective energy, but uh, we got the staff here. And so the sacrifice is, as it sounds, about making a sacrifice, but it's about making a sacrifice to spirit as a way to show spirit that you trust, that you believe, that you have faith that spirit will return what you sacrifice to it tenfold. So what is it that you hold on to the most in your life that you fear you wouldn't be able to be without? And can you make that sacrifice to spirit? So you could think of this maybe as your ego. <laughs> that would be a good one, right? To sacrifice. Or it could be control. Or it could be maybe you need to provide aid to someone in some way. Okay, there's something here that you need to sacrifice and I don't mean like you know <laughs> get a goat out on a table with a dagger <laughs> that's what I'm talking about I'm talking about just releasing the energy that you have surrounding a certain person or a situation in your life um, and trusting that spirit will take care of you and lead you in the right direction so the staff is about authority, it's about guidance, and it's also about being between, between options, between energies, action, inaction, masculine, feminine, those kinds of things, light, dark. And it's about understanding that there is always a polarity and life is about finding the balance between the two. And the staff card encourages you to, once again, trust that the universe will balance itself out, but also to take some responsibility and accountability in your role within the universe by nudging the energy in the direction that you feel is best for yourself in your highest self, you know, not from an ego-based place. <laughs> I don't think the card's saying that. Okay, so, I mean, this seems like a very obvious kind of reading, but also one that we need a reminder of now and then. You know, when I got the sacrifice card here for us, I thought, well, what is it? You know, what is it that I cling on to that I would need to sacrifice, you know? And I think for me, that's probably comfort. Uh, I'm a Taurus stellium, <laughs> so comfort's a big deal to me. Okay, but comfort, you know, I, I get into a certain way of being, a certain way of thinking, of doing things, of living certain places, of having certain people around me. I get comfortable. It's familiar, it's safe, it's secure, and I... Uh, have a difficult time pushing myself into new realms. And so what I would sacrifice is comfort. And I would, I guess, allow myself to be pushed in directions that made me feel uncomfortable if I felt like they were for my highest good. That would be my sacrifice. So what would yours be? That's something to think about. And then, of course, I would nudge myself in a direction that I would want to go in, you know? It would probably be something uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, let's get into the message here for you and let's see, or for us as a collective, and see what comes out. We're going to get six cards here. What do you want to say? OK, 
Okay, we have the Eight of Cups in reverse at the bottom. <laughs> Not wanting to leave the comfort, right? But I should say that, you know, I have a Taurus stellium in the eighth house, which is about transformation. So it's like, you know, kind of the jokes on me with that one, right? Okay, let's see. Energy that surrounds you at this time, three of cups, finding harmony with others, with your community, with your friends, with your lover, with your children, with your family. Celebrating, communicating, having a good time, enjoying life. You know, that's the energy that's around you. And I feel like there's some negative energies around that are clouding that potential. Okay, and these are probably societal energies. They could be individual energies that you're dealing with in your life, other people, but it seems that there is a real opportunity to sink into, I'm hearing, to sink into relaxation with those who are like-minded and to have a good laugh. That's what I'm hearing, to have a good laugh. But there's so much going on i'm in canada so you know there's a lot going on here right now even tonight we're having a major decision in our country about particular policies and legislations but no matter where you are in the world there's a lot going on a lot of transformation change moving out of the comfort zone <laughs> so i feel like that energy Well, it's misleading to a certain degree because there is so much to enjoy at this time, probably on an individual basis within your own life. If you focus more on, well, you know that, so uh, that song, no, it's not a song, but okay, <laughs> that saying, uh, act locally, think globally act locally think globally and i feel like that's what the card's saying it's if you want global peace love light ascension all of those things you have to act on that locally within your inner circle within your family within your friends within your love connections you know you have to bring that harmony there if that's what you want to see out in the world so that's the energy that's surrounding you if you want honesty and truth in our world, if you want fairness and goodwill, then make sure you're extending that in your personal connections and make sure that's being extended to you. You know, don't put up with anything else. Okay, there's obviously lots of energies around. Um, and I feel like this is something pretty serious recently for people who are <laughs> healing or in light work or spiritual in whatever way you work in that regard. And there is a kind of, um, well, spiritual warfare is a real thing. And I definitely feel like it has descended upon us at this time. Uh, but of course, it's nothing to be scared of. It's just something to be aware of because that kind of energy feeds on your lack of awareness of its existence. Okay, so as soon as you are aware that it exists, it's easy to fend off. Okay, as soon as you can identify the feeling that or where that feeling's coming from or who's trying to agitate you in what way, it's pretty easy to deal with it. Okay, so a shift that's coming in right now is the two of wands in reverse. This is not making that decision, right? This is that sacrifice to surrender yourself to the bigger cause, the bigger picture, which isn't to say don't make decisions in your life, but allow yourself to be moved with the flow of things. Try to let go of control a little bit, you know, especially when it's coming from a fear-based place when you're trying to control your life or control the people around you because you're scared of what will happen if you take your hands off the wheel. The shift is coming. The shift that is coming is one of trust, faith, and acceptance. Yeah. 
I feel that quite a bit. Something that's ending. <laughs> the Four of Wands. Stability, comfort, the same old, same old, foundation. You know, and that's okay. It's always nice to have that, but sometimes we do need that push, right? To move us into that direction of something entirely new, Page of Swords, to get us to see something, Wheel of Fortune, a whole new way of being, a whole new cycle that is not steeped in toxicity or people who I'm hearing provoke or advocate toxicity, you know? Yeah. So some kind of shift, some kind of change, getting out of your comfort zone. Something that is beginning, the Two of Cups in reverse. This is breaking up those contracts that just have not been serving you. Breaking up with people, maybe. Breaking apart from things. Letting go of energies that are no longer a vibrational match to you. I was watching something recently and uh, the person was talking about well there's energies that just kind of like to creep around you know people who are ascending they like to creep around watch follow track study what those people are up to so they can leech off of them or bring them down or try to attack them in some way and i feel like what's beginning is really removing yourself from that energy and this doesn't mean becoming a hermit i heard a hobbit or a hobbit or shunning people or becoming a recluse it just means identifying and just saying no and just putting that energetic boundary down that's all that really is you can you know, pass those people in the street and say hi or not if you don't want and just move along and let that energy go. You know, you don't have to engage with everyone. And if you're highly empathic or intuitive, you probably have a tendency to engage those who um, need help or act like they need help, you know, or act like they want help. Maybe they do need help, but they act like they want it. Uh, when they really don't, okay? So, and they just want to take your energy. You know, we know all of this. I, I'm assuming that everybody here, well, most people who are watching, I'm sure there's some of those other energies watching, but, you know, most of us here, um, yeah, we know how easily it can be to have our energy drained by, well, unaware people or people who have, low vibrations or attached to some negative frequencies which are usually their unconscious shadows or the unconscious collective shadow is the negative frequency that they're tied to so something that lies ahead for you or the collective it's time to fight it's time to stand up for what you believe in it's time to engage in healthy conflict exchange of ideas to rock that foundation going from the four for what we're letting go to the five to what's ahead and then ultimately we want to get to the six after this which is victory but we need to go through to the five right So there is a conflict of, oh, I heard of interest, okay. There's a conflict of ideas. And if you're a light worker, if you're a healer, then part of your path is conflict resolution, first and foremost within yourself, but then also showing others how to have that conflict resolution within themselves, which doesn't mean doing it for them, right? So I feel like there's still a little bit ways for us to go as a collective ascending. Is There's still more conflict that we need to go through 
that we need to process, that we need to learn from some lessons so that we can become victorious with, with wisdom. Learn from experience. You know, I mean, you can always tell, right, when someone's trying to teach you something or they're talking about something that they actually haven't gone through or they, like, you know, they have no life experience in that area. And that's not to say you can't talk about things that you haven't gone through. Of course you can. But when you're offering advice, well, it feels a lot different when you get it or you give it uh, with experience. And that's why it's so important for us to respect our elders as well because they've been through shit. They know things. And, you know, this whole... I, I was just talking to somebody the other day, this whole millennial versus boomer bullshit. You know, that's just another distraction from our ascension because we're actually supposed to be learning from our elders and respecting our elders. And now we have this culture where younger people are looking at the elders as if they don't know anything. And it's pretty spiritually bankrupt, okay? So there's something about going through the conflict ourselves to become the elders that we will be, right? And that we are to others already, depending on how old you are, right? Because our elders have been through things, our elders have seen things, and it's time we listen to what they have to say if we're not already. And if you're an elder, it's time people listen to what you say because you have gone through conflict, you've witnessed it, you have experience, you have life experience. And so part of the sacrifice here for some of us is that ego of I know a lot, okay? Or I've been spiritually blessed, therefore I can tell you about this stuff in your life that I've never gone through. We have to be a little bit aware of our own experiences and just because we've experienced something doesn't mean it's equal to somebody else's experience right everything's in shades everything has tones everything ha is a continuum right one person's experience of I don't know domestic abuse is going to be different than another's right okay so something you can manifest during this time is the seven of pentacles getting out of stagnancy and what better way to do it than the five of wands, right? So this looks like it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. There's an uncomfortable time coming up. But the first message from Spirit was trust us. Trust us. Show us that you trust us. Okay, let's get one more to clarify the manifestation. How to move out of stagnancy. How to move out of stagnancy in addition to the five of wands, Spirit. Two of Pentacles, the Hangman. See, this is like um, balancing action, taking action towards something with also um, perspective and being knowing when to stay still, knowing when to say something and knowing when not to say something. It's a big balance and it's difficult. It, it takes some work. And that's what the staff is about. It's like nudging yourself in a certain direction, leading the way forward, but also knowing when to just hang in the balance of things. I feel like, and I got this message before, and I was going to do this whole reading different, but it's really not my vibe today, so just going with how I feel. And you can probably tell tell them in the I'm in the moon. I'm in the moon. Well, we have moon in Scorpio, and that's my vibe right now. I'm feeling it. It's like the melancholy side of Scorpio. Yeah, hermit in reverse, kinda, yeah. But I have the message, here's a Scorpio card right here, that Well, maybe I'll just leave it. You can't 
Um, well, <laughs> we know this already, but it's like you can't trust everything you see. But it's also... Everybody's kind of on their own spiritual path, but we're all collectively connected. And there's going to be a lot of people that are triggering other people at this time. Some people are doing it intentionally. There's no doubt about it. People are coming out from the past, like the woodworks, trying to, you know, get their suckers in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah, and so you're going to see that pretty clear, and you're going to be pretty aware of that. You're going to know exactly what that's all about. But then there's... Yeah, seven of swords behind that. Then there's a lot of like, uh, I don't really know if I trust that, but my intuition's telling me something's off. But, you know, I really like that person. And normally I like what they say. And now uh, this message I'm not quite vibing with. Or I don't really know. That doesn't feel right. And, well, that's okay. You know, you don't have to, you can say, okay, Say you have a mentor that you just love, okay? And you have great conversations with them and you feel like you're fully in alignment with them. And then they say something and you're like, really? Like that feels so weird coming from you. I didn't know you felt like that and I don't vibe with you now. It's like, okay, well, you don't have to not vibe with the entire person. Maybe it's just the message that you disagree with. Maybe there needs to be a conversation there. Right? It doesn't mean that you have to write people off or cancel people and all that bullshit, right? None of that's spiritual, okay? Canceling people is not a spiritual endeavor. It's not, okay? It's all about the balance. It's all about communication and understanding and compassion and a willingness to learn and to sacrifice the ego. All right, I feel like it's going somewhere else. So we're going to end that there. <laughs> and I'm going to get a message here for the collective. Process. Process and laugh. <laughs> it is a process, right? But this is what I was saying at the beginning. It feels like you could have a real good time right now. So we're going through a trying process spiritually, collectively, politically, interpersonally, all of it. Okay, I'm no, I know we all feel it in a different way than we ever have before. But we have to remember to laugh through some of the difficulty. Okay, I love you so much. You're so strong. And I'll see you next time.